Hello and welcome to another AIC Productions video. Today we are going to be doing a storage upgrade on this HP notebook. To do a, a storage upgrade you need a couple of things. Obviously you need the laptop that you're going to be upgrading. You want to make sure you have the power cord plugged in so that it is powered because when we run the backup software it needs to be powered because if it dies, the battery dies during the backup, you can cause damage to the new drive. We don't want to be doing that. You need a new drive. We're going to be doing a Sobrent uh, Rocket, which should be a much faster drive than what's in there. This isn't the most high-end of drives, but it should be significantly quicker. And then you, what you also need is a way to adapt that drive to an external port on this computer. So I picked up one of these. This is just a generic M.2 NVMe SSD. You can see right here on the PCB that it calls it uh, Key M M2 NVMe SSD. I'll put the link to this in the description if you're interested in doing this. One of the reasons why I picked this one specifically is because it came with two cords. This is a USB Type C to USB A. 3.1 and this is USB-C to USB-C so this supposedly supports 3.1 Gen 2 which is a fairly fast uh, drive speed so it should make this copy pretty quick and then you also need a screwdriver with a couple different sizes of bits you need a fairly small one to take apart this case so that you can install your NVMe drive into it and then you need a little bit larger one to unscrew the bottom of the laptop. So let's go ahead and readjust the camera and we will get the backup software going. All right, so we have the computer up and going. We've done some benchmarking and I've installed Macrium Reflect. That's just a program I've used because it's one I've used for a long time. It doesn't necessarily have to be with the one that you use. Just doing a pass mark on the disk mark. Oh, let's expand this a little bit we get a score of 6645 what I really want to see on this is what difference the disk makes if there is a performance difference on the disk if it makes any performance difference for any of the other uh, scores so sometimes when you increase the performance of one thing it unbottlenecks something else and you get a little bit better score here we have crystal disk info it does show that we are running this PCI Express in uh, with just two PCI lanes. It is capable, the drive itself is capable of four, uh, and so the system is bottlenecking it a little bit there, basically cutting it in half. And this is the Crystal Disk Mark scores, and we'll take a screenshot of this so that we can compare it to uh, the performance afterwards. So let's take a screenshot here, grab a new snip. All right, just to show you that that is what we got. Pre-disk update. Now we're gonna go ahead and open up Macrium Reflect. We have the drive installed here to this daughter board. We got the USB-C because this laptop does support USB-C. It plugs in here on the left. have a drive indicator okay so sometimes if the disk doesn't show up sometimes it needs to be formatted so we just do a search for control panel And we go to administrative tools, computer management, and then disk management. And yep, we have a new drive here. So we're just one. All we're doing is initializing it so that Macrium can use it to clone to. We'll uh, refresh this page. There we go. So now we have the other drive there. So we want to clone this disk. We want to select 
this drive and finish and we'll okay we want it right now and this will progress and we will be back when it is done this can take uh, a while depending on how much is on the disk and how fast the disk is and how fast the transfer speeds are things like that so I can't tell you exactly how long this is going to take but it will be several minutes because my disk is pretty full. Cool. Alright so the copy finished and it took about 17 minutes to complete and what you'll see here is we have this 119 gigs of unallocated space at the end of the drive. We want to be able to use that for the main part of the drive there's a couple ways to do that. One, you could not copy over this recovery tools when we did the clone, and that would allow us to extend this drive easily. I purposely copied this to show you that there are some applications here that allow you to resize or, or move partitions around. This is one I just Googled. Um, I'm not going to recommend it, uh, just because, again, Google and find the one that works best for you. And we're going to move or resize this partition drag it to the end and hit OK. Now we have an unallocated space so we're going to move or resize this one and instead of dragging it and moving around we're just going to grab this arrow we're going to fill that whole space. And then we're going to apply. Yes. Now we're doing this before we make it the main drive so that way it won't have any problems or corrupt any data and now if we go back to here and we just open up this PC you'll see that the D drive now has 155 gigs free perfect so we're going to shut down and open up the computer and we will be back in a few moments alright so we have the new drive installed we have the old drive out this is a light on unit And I wanted to answer a couple questions while I had this system open. First of all, once again, I used my handy dandy old, uh, this was a gift card, had like a hundred bucks on it, that I used to go around the edge to pop it. I find that to just be an excellent tool for opening up computers without damaging them. Now, I mentioned the first video that when I opened up this computer, something about this being where a graphics card would go or graphics chip I should say and I've had a few people reach out to me asking me how to add graphic, uh, dedicated graphics to this card uh, to the system board and the answer is you as an end user are not going to be able to you just aren't um, it, it, you would have to have know exactly what chip this system board supports which memory it supports you would have to be able to source that, install it, you'd have to have a special, I don't know if you could use a hot air station or, or what you could use to install these, get the balls to flow and solder correctly. It's not something that you can upgrade, period. It just, it, it, it isn't. And don't expect it to be. I only mention that just because it's funny to see how the different boards are used for different chipsets but as far as upgrading the CPU which is here or adding dedicated graphics as an end user you're not going to be able to even if you could and source the parts for these by the time you paid for them you would be into a more expensive system you just you just are the thing with upgrading RAM or, or storage is in a year or two when this computer is um, obsolete you can take these pieces out and reuse them in another system. I've used this 8 gig of RAM in at least 4 or 5 different systems. Now, yes, I do review laptops, and so I can put them between uh, different systems, but I have uh, DDR3 DIMMs that have been through 8, 9, 10 different computers uh, just because you know something like this or this will be a standard that will survive for quite a while. The other question I've gotten is here about the hard drive. Um, obviously there's a space here for a two and a half inch drive uh, with a screw hole. Uh, actually I think this is for the bottom of the case, but you have a place here where the caddy would go. I don't see any specific mounting holes for it. Um, but it looks like the cable attaches here. It says HDD on the system board and there's an empty slot here. That's my guess of where the cable would attach to. So you'd have some sort of, uh, in fact, yeah. So the drive would fit here. Let me grab one 
real quick. So I have just a drive here. See it fits right there perfectly and then there's enough room here for some sort of connector that would then go and attach here. Um, it might go this way but I haven't, I haven't seen the connector, I haven't shopped it at all. So it might go like this or it might go like this. I'm guessing this is the way it goes with the connectors on this side uh, to mount and then the cable goes here. Now I haven't looked at that, I'm not interested in buying that cable. Uh, I would prefer to stick with the NVMe since it's a faster drive than your typical two and a half inch drive. And if I'm spending the money, I'll just upgrade the uh, M.2 NVMe drive that uh, is here. So anyways, let's go ahead and get the system back together and boot it up and see what our performance is if there if there is any difference in it. Now I did log into the BIOS and there is nothing you can do to change the fact that this is using only two PCI express, express lanes versus four. So um, you are stuck to just the um, two. All right, let's go ahead and put it back together. All right, so we have the new drive installed and I went ahead and did benchmarking. And you can see here we have the Sobrent, I believe I'm saying that correctly, 256 gig drive. And once again, it is PCI Express 3.0, 4X or 4 PCI lanes capable, but it's only running a two. Nothing we can do about that. As far as performance, I wanna talk about this in just a moment, but as far as performance, it didn't seem to have a huge effect on CPU. Uh, it's in with a margin of error here. This is the new result, that's the old result. Looking at 2527 for the new result, 2582 for the old result. So it actually went down there. Uh, 2D Mark also went down by a couple points. 3D Mark went up by a few points. Memory Mark went down. But the Disk Mark went up by nearly double not quite double but a significant amount I mean just huge improvement on the disk mark if we come over to the crystal disk mark scores we can see read went up by a, a small amount but what we really see is the write went up it went up almost a thousand uh, megabytes a second um, on the sequential and um, was that 800 almost and 700 uh, for this one so and it went up significantly on the right for sure now in doing this obviously I'm going to be able to tell a difference in using the system but I wanted to know something um, I was take a look here at the system and specifically the memory so I have 12 gigs of memory because I have one 4 gig and one 8 gig dim in there. I unfortunately do not have a spare 4 gig dim and I do not have a second 8 gig dim but we are running in single channel memory. I don't know if the CPU supports dual channel memory so that's definitely the next thing I'm going to be taking a look at. So I have both of these are 266 um, DDR4s uh, this one, the SK Hynix is a 4 gigabyte. The um, team group is an 8 gigabyte. So um, if you'd like to see me upgrade the memory so we get two matching DIMMs in the system, I don't know if I want to go with two 4 gigs or two 8 gigs. Two 8 gigs is way overkill. Uh, so I'm thinking of getting another 4 gig DIMM uh, to, just because 8 gigs does make sense for this system. Uh, and that way they're matched. Uh, if we get into dual channel mode, uh, if it supports it, that would definitely give us um, faster performance both in graphics and just general use. So uh, definitely interested in doing that. Anyways, if you have any comments, questions, go ahead and ask that down in the comment section down below. You'll be seeing another video of gaming. Um, we're going to install some more games on here and see how they run. If you have any suggestions, I'll definitely add... Uh, Fortnite to that list, maybe an MMO, we'll see. But if you have any suggestions, specifically free games that you'd like to see, let me know down in that comment section down below. Uh, if you want to see me play a pay-for game, you know, a game you have to pay for, um, 
support this channel. I have some affiliate links and other ways to donate to the channel directly. Um, and if I get enough donations, I will happily buy the game uh, directly to, to play. Anyways, thank you for watching, and I hope you have an amazing day.